Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus Demon Brymark painting tutorial, and today we are painting Magnus the Red. Yes, here he is, the uh, Cyclopean, I can't say that word, and I'm not going to try and say that word throughout this tutorial. Yes, we're painting the Primark of the Thousand Suns in demon format, and we're going to be, well, we're just going to jump in and we're just going to start painting him straight away. He's been primed in white scar because a lot of you have been asking me to do more videos with White Scar, and I couldn't decide whether he was going to be Wraithbone or Grace here, so if I went for the middle ground, I went for brighter, but middle ground in the form of White Scar, and that's exactly what I've done here. And, well, we're just going to jump straight in, and we're going to start painting him, and we're going to start with the wings, and then we're going to move on to Magnus himself. Now, it looks very complicated, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Now, the colour we're going to be using first is Black Legion, and we're going to be using this on the outer wings, now, if you want to, you can thin this down a little bit with some contrast medium, but you shouldn't need to. And what we're going to do is on both sets of wings, we're going to start here where the spines get longer. And we're going to go up to where the kind of cluster of wings starts to kind of materialize. So just around about there, just, just, just there. So it's there on this side and it's there on the other side. Well, you will sort of see this when we get into the next take but we're just going to take this black legion and we're going to start painting this all over the top of these feathers now you might be thinking black legion that's a little bit dark isn't it well don't worry we have plans we just want to take this a feather at a time be nice and methodical you don't want to have too much black legion on your brush as you do this you don't want to accidentally overload and start creating weird drying bubbles. So that Black Legion all applied, it is still drying at the moment in some places, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Sigvald Burgundy, and we're now gonna apply this over the rest of the feathers on the wings. So, much like we just did, we're just gonna pick a place to start. I'm gonna start just right here in the middle. And we're just gonna apply the Sigvald Burgundy Just like this. So with that done, as you can see, we've got some pretty two-tone wings here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start adding a little bit of depth in, and we're going to add some Caraba Crimson. And we're going to use this to shade the kind of inner bits of the wings. So the kind of sort of, we don't want to do the first row closest to the black. So that's going to be a different color. But what we want to do is we want to add this Caraba Crimson over the top of this set of wings, well, feathers. Just 
like that. So with that Carabao Crimson all applied, what we're then gonna do is take a roughly two parts Achillean Green to one part Contrast Medium Mix. And what I've done is I've actually put four brushfuls of Achillean Green and two parts of Contrast Medium, just to thin it down that little bit, sort of half the mixture, but doubling it up because of the size of the wings. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this Achillean Green over the top of all of the black. So we're gonna just start down here and we're gonna apply this just like that sort of thing. However, what we're also gonna do is we're gonna use this over the top of the areas of Sigvald Burgundy that we haven't shaded with Carabao Crimson. So starting just up here, we're gonna apply this like this. over the top of that section like that. Then we're gonna wash the brush and then with a clean brush, we're just gonna lift off some of that Achillean green towards the base of the largest feathers Just like that. And then we're just gonna pre repeat the process on the ones just here as well. So you wash the brush. lift like that and you want to repeat this process over the entirety of the wing now it gets a little bit easier when you're down here because you don't actually really need to do it so much on these bottom ones, you can just apply the Keelian Green over the top. And that sort of thing. But you kind of want to kind of do the blending up until around about this one here. So I'm just gonna get the Achillean Green on there, like that. I'm gonna wash the brush. I'm just gonna give it a very light passing over. Like that. And we'll do these last four. Like so, wash the brush, and then blend it out. Like so. So now we can just apply this Achillean green mix over the top of the black. So with that Achillean green applied all over, as you can see, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a dry brush. So the first dry brush we're going to be adding is 
Thousand Suns Blue. And we're gonna be dry brushing this over the top of all of the feathers. And we wanna be nice and gentle here. I'll just build this up very gently. So with that Thousand Suns blue dry brush applied across all of the wings, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna go even gentler now, but we're gonna do another dry brush of Araman blue, and we're gonna stick more towards the black and the darkest parts of our wings. So kinda just wanna come at it from this angle. We're not going to venture too far into the pink. And again, just be really careful. So with that Araman blue dry brush applied all over, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna add a final dry brush and this is going to be some Baharoth blue. And we're gonna be real careful here now. We're gonna be super gentle, just wanting to catch the sharpest points. Across all of our feathers. So with that done, the main parts of the wings are very nearly done. We've just got one last little bit to do on them. And that is the little designs up at the top in the black. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Araman blue and we're gonna paint this over the top of these. So with that Araman blue applied to these little designs, you don't have to worry about the back because there aren't any on the back. But with that done, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna highlight them using some thin down Baharoth blue and what we're just going to do is we're just going to look for any ridges all the way around them. So with that now done, the wings 
are pretty much finished. The only thing we haven't done are the talons at the top and the bits of armor on there. I have corrected them. I've kind of cleaned them up with a bit of white scar, but for now, we're gonna move on from the wings. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna work on the hair because this is one of those kind of complicated bits. And once it's done, we don't actually need to come back to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Shayish purple here and we're gonna apply this over the top of all of Magnus's hair. You're going to require a bit of brush gym gymnastics here. It doesn't matter if you get this on some of that armor. You just want to be really careful around his flesh and, of course, around the feathers of the wings. So with that Shayish purple all applied, we're just gonna wait for it to dry. But in the interest of time, what we're going to do is we're gonna take a roughly four parts Sigvald Burgundy to one part contrast medium mix. And we're gonna apply this over the top of his arms, his head and his torso. We're just gonna ignore the legs just for the moment. And well, we're just gonna pick a place to start and we're gonna start just kind of around here on his arm. Now, the reason we've got four parts Sigvald Burgundy to one part contrast medium is because we're looking to just improve the flow here we're not looking to thin the paint down too much this is just so that we get a nice smooth coat over the top of these large areas but as always with these things just want to take it a section at a time. Don't have too much paint on your brush. And just mop up any pools as you go. Just being real careful here. So with all of that Sigvald Burgundy and Contrast Medium mix applied to the torso, arms and face, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Volupus Pink and we're going to apply this over the top of the hair. So with that Volupus pink applied to the hair, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on kind of brightening up some of this kind of skin up here. However, what we're not gonna do is do this all over. We're gonna just looking to do this across most of him, excluding this arm, where we're actually gonna do a little bit of a highlight. So the color we're gonna be using is a roughly two parts Wazdaka red to one part Scream pink. And what we're gonna do is on areas over here, such as this arm, we're just going to re-layer this over the top of all the muscles. So we're looking to add some of that red in now. And we're just looking to avoid any of the recesses.
leading our Sigvald Burgundy. Where it is. And like that sort of thing. However, when it comes to the arm on this side, what we're looking to do is we're looking to pick out the edges. And that's quite a wide highlight, hence why I haven't swapped my brush. And we're gonna kind of do this up past, up until that bicep there so we want to kind of go a bit essentially alongside the feathers just over here so this bicep for example we can fully cover over Otherwise, on this arm, everything's just going to get an edge highlight. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Drooky Violet and we're going to use this to shade this arm. Well, we've just done our edge highlight rather than the whole thing. The only place we're going to avoid on this arm is the feathers. And so with that Drooky Violet applied, we're then gonna take some Caraberg Crimson and on the rest of him, we're just gonna add a little bit of this into the deepest, darkest recesses of his muscles. Just like this. We're also going to apply this over the top of his face. All over like that. And over the top of it, those feathers. So with those shades applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down Wazdaka Red and we're going to use this to now highlight all of Magnus's skin. I'm just going to start here on the face because it's the most prominent of these features. What we're looking 
looking to do is just pick out any raised edges and the curvature of his muscles. So with that Wazdaka red all applied, what we're now gonna do is take some pink horror. I'm gonna use this on the sharpest points, but still not quite a spot highlight. So for example, around here on the purple hand, I'm gonna pick out all those raised edges. Like so. On his face, we're going to do the same thing. And around on the muscles, we're just gonna pick out any kind of really sharp edges, any really kind of clearly defined ridges. Still sticking with Pink Horror, because I definitely didn't mention it in the last take. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using Pink Horror to highlight the hair. So with that pink horror applied, we're then gonna take some Emperor's Children. I'm gonna use this as our little spot highlight. Just picking out the sharpest corners around the face, the muscles. stuff. So with that Emperor's Children all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down Arum and Blue and we've got this sort of sigilness going on here on his arm. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take the Arum and Blue and we use this to highlight all of this area. Like this. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna use Aram and Blue to highlight the feathers. And so with that Aram and Blue applied, we're then gonna once again take some Baharoth Blue. And we're gonna apply this as a little spot highlight on the feathers and on these runes.
So with that done, what we're now going to do is move on to our next colour, and that's going to be some Black Legion. And we're going to apply it in a couple of places. So firstly, we've got these little ribbed cables and things just in here. So we're going to apply this Black Legion over these. Like that sort of thing. Might as well do the third one whilst we're here. Like that. We're also going to apply this Black Legion over the top of Magnus's belt. over the top of the book cover as well, because it's here. We're also going to apply this over the handle of his staff. of the staff and that sort of thing and then up here on these large horns on his head we're going to apply black legion over the tip just the tip just like that So with that Black Legion all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply this over the top of the chest horns and his fingernails and talons, but we're not going to do them over the top of the large ones. On his head, or the talons at the top of the wings. Those are a slightly different colour. So with that skeleton horde all applied, we then take Seraphim Sepia and we're going to apply this over the top of the other horns and the talons at the top of the wings. So with that Seraphim Sepia all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Achillean Green and we're going to apply this to all of the little blue accents on the kind of belt and above armour. Don't worry again, we're going to get to the legs, we're just going to get everything up here done and then we will get to the legs. So what I mean by this is we're going to take the Achillean Green and we're just going to pick a place to start. Now I recommend having the box art in front of you for this, but we've got areas such as this little part of the wing armour like that We've got the beaks on the chest here. Like that. We have 
the occasional little sunspots, for example, around here. I'm just looking at the box art myself. I believe it's this one alternating. Hang on. Yeah. Just do it over here for the sake of argument. Small one at the top, followed by this one. Followed by that one there, like that. We have the kind of panels of the belt. and so on and so forth so you just want to pick all these areas out with the Achillean green and then once that's done we'll come back So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to finish off the horns by taking two colours, Reichland Flesh Shade and Black Templar. And we're going to do a little bit of blending here. So we're going to take the Reichland Flesh Shade on our brush first of all. And we're going to, here on this main horn just here, we're going to apply Reichland Flesh Shade over the top of that section, just there like that. We're going to wash the brush. And then with a clean brush. I'm just going to come in here and smooth out that transition. So it's quite subtle as you can see. We're then going to take the Reichland Flesh Shade once again and on the back here we're going to apply the Reichland Flesh Shade once more. Coming down a little bit further than we did before. I'll just come back around the other side like that. We're going to wash the brush, then we're going to blend it out, and then we're going to take a little bit of Black Templar, and just right up here, we're going to add some of that Black Templar, so it comes around the corner just a little bit, like so, we're going to wash the brush. Grab some Reichland Flesh Shade. Then we're just going to use this to blend the two colours together. Like that. Wash the brush. And then just smooth it out. Like that. And so with that now done, we're then going to take a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part gore grunt to firm mix. I'm going to apply this over the top of the horns and once again we're just going to do a little bit of blending. So we're going to apply this just like that. We're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to smooth out the transition just like that. We're also going to apply this over the top of the black at the top. And we're going to apply this over the top of the entirety part of the back where we added the black templar.
So with that now done, what we're going to do is move on to all of the metallics. Now, the colour we're going to be using first is Iron Hand Steel. And we're going to be applying this over the top of well, all of our silver details, which is going to be the majority of Magnus's armour. Now, there is a lot of gold here, but what I would recommend is just don't be too worried about making sure you've got the difference between gold and silver. You can always correct that later on. You just want to, for now, build up a nice strong silver base over the top of, well, all of the armor. Of course, if you've got the box art in front of you, you can always use that as a guide track to just avoid any of the gold details. And again, we are just ignoring the legs for the moment. Even though there is armor there. So with that iron hand still applied all over, as you can see, We've done this over the top of all the armor, as well as the spear, staff, whatever it is. <laughs> what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shade it rather than do the gold next, because it'll make our job a little bit, little bit. I'll stick with it. We're gonna shade it with some Nuln Oil, because it'll make our job a little bit easier when it comes to doing the gold. And so with that null oil all applied, what we then do is we take some thinned down iron breaker. And we're gonna use this to re-layer all of the silver. Just avoiding anywhere where the null oil has really settled in the recesses. So with that iron breaker all applied, what we're now gonna do is just before we highlight it, is we're gonna take some thinned down retributor armor. We're gonna apply this over the top of all of our remaining metallic details on the torso. And on the weapon. And over everywhere else that we've been doing the silver. And if you do happen to get any of this on any of the silver, you just use a little bit of iron breaker to tidy it back up. So with all of that retributor armor now applied, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shade it. And the colour we're going to use to shade it is Brightland Flush Shade. So with that Reichland Flesh Shade all applied, what we're gonna do now is take some thinned down Liberator Gold. And we're gonna use this to re-layer all the gold, just like we did with the silver. 
So what we're looking to do here is just brighten it right back up. Avoiding any of the recesses. Or places where the right and flesh shade is really settled. So with that done, the top half of Magnus is in pretty good nick. So what we want to do now is we want to work on the bottom half of Magnus and then we'll do all of our final highlights at the end. Because he's looking pretty good up there and you could leave him here, it's way beyond War Hipster battle ready. But anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a roughly four parts Sigvald Burgundy to one part contrast medium mix. And we're gonna apply this over the top of his legs, but we're gonna apply this over the top of the feathers and we're gonna apply the legs up to here on that bit of armor. We're not gonna do the feet. So we're just gonna start up here underneath the book. And then we're just gonna apply Sigvold Burgundy like this. Over the top, just like we did on his torso. So with that Sigval Burgundy applied, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and Leviathan purple. I'm gonna paint this over the top of his feet. Like this, and you'll notice that there's a couple of little feathers there that we haven't painted, and that's on purpose. So we're avoiding them with the purple. So with that Leviathan purple and contrast medium mix applied to the feet, what we're now going to do is we're going to take our two parts Achillean green to one part contrast medium mix that we did on the wings once again. And this time, unfortunately, we're going to do quite a lot of blending. So the first thing we're going to do just to keep things off, to make it nice and easy, is on these little feathers just here, we're just going to apply the Achillean green like this. Nice and simple. Like that. And we've got no more on that side. And we've got some on this side as well. So just do that whilst we're here. Like that. Then what we're gonna do with the Achillean green is we're gonna do some blending on the feathers just like we did on the wings. So along all of this kind of up to here, so you've got this little cluster of them there, there's four and then one, two, three, four hiding in there. But over the top of the rest of them, we're gonna apply Achillean green and then we're gonna blend it out. So we're just gonna start here and we're gonna apply that Achillean green Like that. And then we're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to start lifting off some of that excess.
creating some lovely little soft transitions. Like that, in those wings on the leg. I'm gonna do that on the inside and the outside. The last thing that we're gonna do with the Keelian Green is the same thing, but around the base of the leg. So we're gonna start applying this over the top of all of the feathers. We're gonna come up to where those plugs are. And we're gonna come all the way around the leg. We wanna move quite quickly here. We're gonna wash the brush. And then we're gonna once again, kind of just take most of it off on the leg muscle itself. So we're kind of applying our first bit of shading whilst also having that gradual fade down into the purple color that we've got down here on the, on the foot. And we just want to move round here, grab a little bit more Achillean green, wash the brush, just like that, come around here. And then in there is probably the trickiest bit to get to without pinging it all over the cloth. Wash the brush. And then once again, we just take off most of that paint, smoothing out the transition, creating that lovely fade down into the purple of the foot, like that, as you can see. And that's exactly what we want across the inside of the feathers as well, and on the other leg. So, I'll see you in just a moment. So with that done, Magnus should now have some pretty sexy looking legs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a couple of shades here and there. So the first one we're gonna add is Drooky Violet, I'm going to add this over the top of the feet. And with that Drooky Violet applied over the feet, we're then gonna take some Carabird Crimson and we're gonna apply this over the top of the remaining areas of the legs that we haven't already shaded with our Achillean Greens. This is mostly just gonna be kind of his thighs. So with both of those shades applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna rattle through the metallics just here on the rest of his legs. It's the same recipe as we've done so far on the armor. So we're gonna get it up to the same stage as the chest and the shoulder and all that kind of thing. We're not gonna film it again because you've already seen it once before, but we are of course, just as a quick recap, gonna be using iron hand steel for all the silver. We're gonna shade that with null oil and we're gonna relayer it with iron breaker. And for the gold, we're gonna add Retributor Armor. I'm going to shade that with Reikland Flesh Shade and then we're going to relayer that with Liberator Gold just to get it up to the same standard as the rest of his metallics. So you just want to go ahead and do this. And then once that's done, we'll come back. So with our metallics now all up to code, I didn't mention it in the last take, but what we did also do is apply that Achillean green over the top of the little blue details that are scattered around here, just like we did up here on the chest plate and various different areas of the armor on Magnus. So what say we finish off a few more base coats, shall we? So what we're gonna do next 
is we're going to take some Pilar Glacier and we're going to apply this over the top of all of Magnus's cloth. got the large tabard here we've got the two little trails off the back as well however once we've got the pilar glacier all over what we're also going to do is apply this color over the top of the big energy ball on his staff. Over here. So with that Pilar Glacier all applied, we're then going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply this over top of Magnus's Talons. like this and we're also going to apply this over the pages of the book and so with that now done what we're going to do is we're going to take two colors Achillean green and Sigvald burgundy we're going to apply them over the top of this feather down here so what we're going to do is we're just going to take some Sigvald burgundy on our brush first and we're just going to apply this over the top of the feather like that we're going to wash the brush. Then we're going to grab some Achillean green and towards the tip, we're just going to add it in there. Like that. Wash the brush. Then we're just going to Kind of lift off some of that excess. Just kind of pull it all together. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So with that done, believe it or not, we've just got two areas left, but one we're going to leave right to the end, and that is all of the kind of eyes that will be done at the same time as all those gems. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our last base coat, which is going to be some Thin Down Thousand Suns Blue, and we're going to apply this over the top of the design on all the fabric. You just want to go for stuff that's enclosed, so don't worry about any of the Or just lines like this one around here. That's already done. So with that Thousand Suns Blue applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to add a shade. And this is going to be some Tyran Blue, or Tyran Blue. And we're going to apply this over the top of the flames on 
over here. We're just going to avoid the ball. So with that done, Magnus is now, well, no, he's not. He's not at a war hipster battle already, but all of his base coats are on near his dammit. We do just have those little gems and eyes and things to do, but we're gonna now start finishing off lots and lots of details. Now, the color we're gonna be using next is Temple Guard Blue. And we're gonna be using this to highlight all of our Achillean green bits of armor. So for example, we're just gonna start up here on the wings. And then we're gonna work our way around the model. So with that temple guard blue all applied, just before we finish off all of these Achillean greeny bits all over him, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thins down Araman blue. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of the feathers on his legs, just like we've done before. On the arm and on the wings. So with that Araman blue applied to all of the feathers, as you can see, what we're now going to do is we're going to finish off all of those details. So all of the Achillean green bits and the feathers and the color we're going to be using to do this is of course Baharoth blue, just as we've done before on all of our other feathers. But in addition, we're looking for the sharpest points. on all of our bluish armor as well. And any areas that are gonna really catch the light. like this. So with that done, all of the blue and the feathers are now finished. And he's looking pretty fantastic. So what we're gonna do now is move on to the metallics. And we're gonna highlight both the silver and the gold using some thins down storm host silver. Now you don't have to hit every single edge. You just wanna hit the sharpest ones really. He's already very, very, very bright. But what we're looking to do is just make him appear really shiny in places. like this. The other thing to do at this point is to 
pick out anything that's going to be a gem. So we've got areas like in this shoulder. Got the gems in the eyes. So with that done, all of the metallics are now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Yuri or Yellow and we're going to apply this over the top of Magnus's eye. And with that Yuri or Yellow applied, as you can see, what we're then going to do is going to take a teeny tiny little dot Black Legion. I'm going to apply this right in the middle. Just like that. So with Magnus's eye now done, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our next color and that is going to be some thinned down Screaming Skull. And we're going to use this to highlight all of our bone areas, which is going to include areas such as the talons, the horns, and the parchment. So with that Screaming Skull all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the black details. And we don't have very many of these, as you know. But what we do have are the tips of the horns. Like that. We have his belt. We have the book. We have the scabbard. And we have this haft of his staff. So with that done, all of our black details are now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Corax White. Now this might seem a little bit weird because Corax White is in fact a lot darker than White Scar is. So naturally this is going to be a little bit brighter. But what this is going to do is going to create a really soft transition on our clothes. So we're just going to start applying this over the top of all of the flats of our white cloaks cloth, I should call it. Just avoiding anywhere where our pilar glacier has really settled in the recesses. So with that done, the cloth is now all finished. We've got some really lovely subtle shading on there. It's nice and bright. We don't want it to be too stark is the only thing because then it will start to look a bit weird. So what we're going to do is move on to our next thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Corax White and Baharoth Blue. And we're going to thin it down a lot more than we would normally. So it's kind of almost like a glaze consistency. So for five or six parts of water. And we're going to apply this over the top of our ball. Like that sort of thing. And then we're also gonna use this Add some highlights. So 
So with that then done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly two to one mix of White Scar and Bacharoth Blue. Basically just doing the same thing again. We're just going to thin it down a little bit more than we did normally, so three or four parts water. Then we're just going to add this to the sharpest points on the flickering flames, quite roughly. It's almost like a dry brushing motion, except we've got really wet paint here. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of the ball again. like that. And then we can wash the brush and we can use a somewhat cleaner brush. To just kind of add some little brush strokes here and there to make it look a little bit like it's coruscating. It's a very subtle effect, but it's very effective. And so with that done, just to finish off this kind of thing, I've been calling it the ball. What we're going to do is we're going to take some Druki Violet and we're just going to add a little tiny amount of this. Not very much at all. over the flames. Just want to add a little tiny hint of purple in there. So with that done, our glowing orb is now finished. So what we're going to do is move on to his feet. Now the colour we're going to be using to highlight his feet is Jean Steeler Purple. And all we're going to do here is we're just going to look for edges, joints and raised details. And we're just going to apply little highlights here. So with that done, the feet are now finished. We don't want to do too much to them. So what we're going to do now is move on to our last couple of bits. So we're going to firstly do the gems and then we'll do all of the eyes scattered around his body. Now the first color we're going to be using for gems is Talisar Blue. And we're going to be applying this to, well, pretty much all of these kind of dome shaped ones that are scattered around the armor. Like that. And so with that Talisar Blue applied, we then take some Volupus Pink and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our oval shaped gems. We've got a couple of really big ones here. on the staff on either side. We've got some on the heads. Of these birds on his knees. Like that. And we've got one 
on either side of his tusks on the front there. Let's say with that all done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thinned down white scar. I'm going to use this to do two things. So firstly, what we're going to do on all of the gems is we're going to add a little dot. Just a teeny little tiny one. So for example, just on this one here. And a little tiny dot. Just like this. Same again here on the chest. Like that sort of thing. Put the one here in the eye as well. Just gonna add this right in the middle. Like that. And what we're also gonna do with the white scar is gonna use this to tidy up any of the eyes. including this one here in the hand. And so with that done, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some Eldari Emerald and we're gonna paint this over the top of the iris. of each of the eyes. Like this. However, on the one on his hand, what we want to do, because there isn't a sculpted bit, we want to take a small amount of Eldari Emerald. We want to add a little circle Right in the middle, like that. And so for our last trick on Magnus himself, we're gonna take a tiny little amount of Black Legion. And we're just gonna add a dot of it right in the middle of the eye in his hand. If you want to, or if you think you need to, You can go around the others and just add a little bit of it right in the right in the pupil like that. But the Eldari should have, Emerald should have covered it. And with that, Magnus the Red is finished. So we're gonna have a little rest. And then we'll tackle the base. And we're back. So now we've got to get this base done. And it's actually quite simple. It does. It is a crushed dreadnought arm, and it is going to be a crushed dreadnought arm of no others than the Space Wolves themselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Space Wolves Grey, and we're going to apply this over the top of the dreadnought, just like this. Just be a little bit careful of his talons. But otherwise, you just want to get this all over, like this. So 
So with that space wall's grey applied, we then take some thin down Retributor armour and we're going to apply this over the things like the jewellery and stuff that's scattered all over it. So we've got half a jewel here. Like that. We've got these little triangles. Here on the fist. Like so. There's a wolf's head just down there. And there's various totems and things hanging from the chain on the shoulder. So with that Retributor armor all applied, we then take some thinned down Iron Warriors and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the sort of metallic details that are remaining. On the Dreadnought's arm. What we're also going to do is we're going to add a little bit of that Iron Warriors into the battle damage. Just like that. So with that Iron Warriors applied, we then take some Skeleton Horde. And we apply this over the top of all the skulls. And so with that Skeleton Horde applied, we're then going to take some Blood Angels Red and we're going to apply this over the top of the gems. Like that. And we're going to apply this as well over the top of these little triangular bits. And so with that Blood Angels Red all applied, we then take Null Noil. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of our metallics, including the gold and the silver. So with that done, the bit that Magnus is standing on is pretty much finished. The only thing I'm going to do, and this is an optional extra, is I'm going to take some rust grey and I thin it down sort of four or five parts water, make it almost to a glaze consistency. And I'm going to apply this rust grey over the top of the flats of the armour just to brighten it up and smooth it out just a little bit, make it look a bit more space wolvy. And this is kind of what we do always whenever we're doing space wolves on the channel. It is entirely optional, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But I'm just doing it because I want it to be a little bit brighter. And so with that rust grey all applied, all that's left to do is to neaten up the rest of the base because, well, I'm going to be doing this in the same style as my Arcane Wasteland base because this is about Adam and this is what he wants. So rather than doing White Scar to kind of tidy up all of those splodges from different colours, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some Sotec Green I'm just going to apply this over those bits. Like this. So with that Sotec Green applied, we then take three colours. Ethermatic Blue, Achillean Green and Pterodon Turquoise. And we just smash this all over the base in a nice random fashion. So I'm just gonna load up my brush here with Ethermatic Blue. I'm gonna get this all over this little section just here. 
like that. I'm going to wash the brush. And then I'm going to grab some Achillean Green. I'm going to paint this in as well. Over the top of the Sotek. Blending it into the ethematic blue a little bit. Gonna wash the brush. Grab some pterodon turquoise. Do the same thing over here. Grab a little bit more ethematic blue. Just like that, we're looking for lots of kind of variation in color on the base here. So with that all done, it's a bit streaky and patchy, but that's okay. Because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take Morden Earth and we're just gonna start piling this all over the base. Now, Morden Earth is a texture crackle paint and what will happen is as it dries it'll start to pull apart so I'm using this ratty old monster brush from the army painter and I'm just going to get this all over the base and the thing with these crackle paints is the more you put on the thicker the layer the longer it'll take to dry but the bigger the cracks Whereas the thinner the layer, the smaller the crackle in fact. So we're gonna go quite thick in some places and quite thin in others, just to get a bit of variation. But otherwise, you just want to get this all over. Just be careful when you get close to Magnus. So once that Morden Earth is all dry, as you can see, we've got this really nice crackling effect going on all over the base. But what we need to do now is seal it down so that it doesn't ping off. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Lamy and Medium and we're going to apply this all over the top. So with that Lamy and Medium all applied, what we then do is we take some Sotec Green and we use this to dry brush the base. And then finally, to finish it off, what we do is we take some Baharoth Blue and we add a very gentle dry brush of this over the top of the base, just in little patches here and there. We're not looking to cover the whole thing. This is just gonna add a little bit of visual interest. So with the rim of that base completed with a bad and black, Magnus the Red, the demon Primarch of Zinch, is now finished. And that's it, we've done all three now that are available to us. Angron, Mortarion, and Magnus. And I think this one's the most impressive of the three so far. It's not my favorite, Angron's my favorite, but I think this might be one of the best things I've ever painted. <laughs> Adam, I hope you're happy, and I uh, hope you enjoy playing with your Magnus. I will not be facing him, because I'm never facing your Thousand Sons ever again. Boo. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And 
If you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.